Do you feel like you have less money left over at the end of each month? Or are you looking for some ways to cut back on your streaming expenses? If so, you're not alone. We talk to many people who are looking for ways to save on their monthly streaming costs. And while we often talk about ways to save on cable, this is our first video devoted completely to stretching your streaming budget. The tips we're sharing here are ones we've used ourselves and things we've recommended to others and seen them use to save big. So if you're looking for a new way to save, it will give you some ideas for yourself or some that you can share with a friend or family member who is new to streaming. Yeah, let's get into it with nine ways to save money on streaming without giving up all of your favorite shows and sports. Let's dive in with our first way to spend less on streaming services. Use an over-the-air antenna. Now, if you already have one, great. If not, now is the time to get one. An antenna is absolutely the best way to save and stretch your streaming budget. We have done videos on antennas and how to choose the best one for you, so please watch those. An antenna is one of the first things that streamers buy after making the decision to cut the cord on cable because it lets you get your local channels for free. Some cord cutters prefer to get their locals through one of the popular live TV streaming services like YouTube TV or Hulu Live. It's convenient and puts all of your channels in one place, which is nice, but you will pay for that convenience. Broadcasters charge streaming services broadcast retransmission fees. They, in turn, pass those fees on to you. That's one of the reasons Sling TV says it doesn't carry locals in most markets, because it lets them charge you less for their service. If you're at a point now where you need or want to pay less for TV each month, switching from a live TV streaming service with locals to a cheaper one like Sling or Philo, or to one of the many on-demand streaming services like Hulu, Disney Plus, or HBO Max, and pairing it with an antenna can slash your costs big time. Let's consider an example. Let's say you currently subscribe to YouTube TV, HBO Max, and Disney Plus on monthly rather than annual plans. You'd be paying $88 a month at time of filming. Switching from YouTube TV to Sling TV and an antenna would save you $30 a month. Switching to just an antenna and an on-demand service would save you $65 a month. Yeah, and that would put some much needed money back in your pocket. If all you're really using a live TV streaming service for is your local channels, or you just want locals in a few popular channels like ESPN and HGTV, this choice is a great way to save money. Another way to save money is to switch to ad-supported plans where possible. Unless you absolutely abhor ads, switching to a plan with them can save you money each month. We covered this in our most recent State of Streaming update, but Netflix is preparing to introduce an ad-supported plan by the end of this year. It mirrors actions already taken by HBO Max, Discovery Plus, and Hulu. Disney Plus is also planning to introduce an ad-supported plan in late 2022. The benefit to switching to plans with ads is that they are typically a few dollars cheaper each month. Let's look at a few examples. At time of filming, switching to ad-supported HBO Max would save you $5 a month. By doing the same with Discovery Plus, you could save $2 a month. And by switching to a Hulu plan with ads, you'd save the most of all, $6 a month. Switching to an ad-supported plan is an easy way to save some money each month without having to give up subscriptions to your favorite streaming services. A third way to save is by taking advantage of deals on streaming service subscriptions. Like devices, streaming services run deals all the time to drive new subscribers. For the past few years, we have used special Black Friday deals to get Hulu for either $0.99 cents or $1.99 a month for a year. Paramount Plus regularly offers special deals as well. We recently got it for $1 a month for three months, and they offer a standing 25% discount for students. And they're not alone. Other streaming services regularly offer deals that let you try the service at a reduced cost for a month or more. These deals are a great way to try a service that you've been on the fence about. Sign up for the deal period, and if you like it enough to pay full price when the deal is done, great. If not, cancel and you're out less money and you have your answer about whether or not the service is worth it for you. Yeah, definitely don't be afraid to wait for a deal to sign up for a service or to use a free trial to explore a service before signing up for them. Another thing you should not be afraid to do to keep your streaming costs lower is to plan your binging. This is something we've done for some time now as a way to stretch our streaming budget. The cable mindset is to sign up for a service and keep it forever. 
Since there are no contracts with streaming services, you can and should start, stop, and pause a service whenever you want or need to in order to save money. There are a few series on Disney Plus and Apple TV Plus, for example, that we want to watch. We are waiting for the series we're interested in to release all their episodes and we will then sign up for one month, binge our shows, and cancel the service. You could even set a rotation with your streaming services where you switch from one service to another every two months, for example. We also pause our subscriptions when we are testing out different services, and that's our fifth way to stretch your streaming budget. Pausing is what it sounds like, a way to put your subscription on hold. Not every live service offers it, but Hulu Live, YouTube TV, and Sling all do. Pausing is an easy way to save money for a month or more without having to unsubscribe, lose all your viewing history and preferences, and then resubscribe and start all over again. Do pay attention to the details, though, because some services will delete your data on pause in some situations. Sling, for instance, will keep your viewing preferences and recordings if you pause your account for one month. But if you pause for longer than that, your recordings will be deleted. Ultimately, understand that pausing is something streaming services would rather have you do than cancel. You should pause when you can to save money, but read the fine print so you don't lose recordings by surprise. Yeah, it's a good reminder to know your streaming service options and take advantage of them to save money. Speaking of saving money, another way to save is to check with your cell phone provider for streaming deals. T-Mobile subscribers on certain Magenta plans, for instance, can get a standard Netflix subscription on either one or two screens at no extra charge. T-Mobile also offers Paramount Plus for free for a year. Active T-Mobile and Sprint postpaid customers can claim a year of Paramount Plus's essential plan for free. And it's offering a $10 per month discount for YouTube TV and Philo subscribers who are also T-Mobile customers. As the Streamable reports, the discount for YouTube TV is permanent as long as T-Mobile subscribers reactivate every year. Subscribers who took advantage of the $10 off per month for life deal in 2021 will continue to receive the discount. However, for new subscribers or those who have not already signed up, the discount is good for just one year. Likewise, the Philo discount runs for 12 months. These are just great, easy ways to slash your streaming costs. Yeah, and there's a few other deals worth mentioning quickly. AT&T customers on an unlimited Elite plan can enjoy HBO Max for free. Verizon will give unlimited plan subscribers a free subscription to Disney+, and Sprint will give you Hulu with an unlimited plus plan. These deals change all the time, so please check the site before subscribing to a streaming service to see if you might be able to get what you want for free. Another way to save on your streaming costs relates to streaming devices. Specifically, don't buy a streaming device if you don't need one. Now that last part is key because we're not saying streaming devices are bad at all. But if you have a smart TV, like 82% of Americans do, you may not need a streaming device. Newer smart TVs such as those from Samsung, Sony, and LG have streaming service apps built into them, eliminating the need for a separate device like a Roku or a Fire TV stick. With streaming devices starting around $30, if you're looking for a quick way to save some money, trying your TV first to see if it has the apps you need is a good idea. If you do want or need a streaming device, wait to buy one on sale. They do go on sale throughout the year, especially around Black Friday. Our eighth way to shave some money off your streaming expenses is by going totally free. Free ad-supported streaming services are huge right now. They're growing audiences faster than any other type of streaming service. We've covered some of the best free streaming services here, so watch our video. But free services like Pluto and Tubi are a great way to get free entertainment. In fact, if you switch to just free services and an antenna for your locals, you could take your streaming costs all the way down to zero. Now our final way to stretch your streaming budget is a good habit to get into and practice regularly, and that's to stop and think about what you actually watch on a regular basis. Audit sounds like a scary word, but there's no need to be afraid of auditing your TV viewing. Once a quarter, spend a few minutes reviewing your credit card bill or bank account and take note of all the streaming services you're paying for. Get out a piece of paper if you need to and write them down along with what you're paying. Then think back over the past month and ask yourself how many times you watched something on that service. Then ask if you're getting the value you should for what you're paying. 
I did this last year and I realized that I hadn't logged into Disney Plus for two months. There just wasn't anything on there that I wanted to see anymore. I realized I could cancel the subscription, save the monthly cost, and wait for the series I was interested in to drop and then watch that content in a month. If you're regularly watching a service, it tells you that you're getting a lot of value out of that service, and it's a good sign that it's worth the cost. But the point is that an audit reveals that. It will show you what to cut and what to keep. Yeah, and auditing your expenses is just a helpful practice to get into, period. Streaming can be a great way to save on your TV costs, especially in comparison to cable. But you do need to be mindful of your subscription so that you don't give back more savings than you should. Well, that does it for this video. Let us know how you stretch your streaming budget in the comments below. Was there a particular way we mentioned that you also use, or what did we leave off our list? Yeah, and if you haven't already, don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you can get all our latest news and reviews when they drop. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in our next video.